Z for X, and I'm joined here by Marshall. Hello there, folks. <clears throat> cult versus Pag, the cult clan versus the planetary annihilation gods. I'm going to be playing on Cult's home system, which is the planet Elysium. Single planet system, tons of metal all over the place, and uh, a decent amount of lakes as well. Oh yes, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to get into the water as as, as bef bef before, but is it really necessary? But uh, the main thing to do is to keep raiding and harassing to stop your opponents uh, expanding unchecked to all the metal because it's so uh, widely spread and densely packed. It's you know it's one of the things you really need to keep check of. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did see one of the spawns there from Pag was actually in the water. I don't. I think they don't favour naval very much. If I remember correctly, they don't tend to like naval. Mm. Um, but with new naval balance, we might see that change. To be honest. <coughs> and uh, see what happens. Pag are a lot more comfortable in this system. Just a single planet, tons of metal. They can uh, split up, take their own stuff, and just uh, and do their own thing, and generally do all right. The players all going to spawn in now. All four players spawning in, um, and uh, we do see Pag has split up into three. So they split up into three separate groups, um, <coughs> whereas Colt is set into two groups of two. And th oh, this is a really interesting. In fact, both teams have spawns that are very far apart. Colt right on the North Pole and very close to the South Pole, almost on polar opposites of the planet. That is very difficult for them. Looking over at Pag, we have one very isolated player here just above that lake. Um, we have the two players that have spawned together and then the one guy that has spawned in the lake. All quite far away from each other, all quite isolated. Um, so both teams very isolated from their players. And it'll be how well they can really work together as a team and stick together and support each other. Yeah, I definitely will. And I've just thought that chap who spawned in the lake there, that's going to be quite important because if he can get out a naval factory, if you look at the mm. northern spawn mm. proximity to the coastline, if you can yeah. get some uh, orcas or indeed some leviathans out if it gets to that, you yeah. can just absolutely decimate that base from the safety of the water. You can do. They can almost <laughs> reach in towards the North Pole. They can probably reach up towards that black layer, which means a lot of that initial starting base from Colt is, is a risk of a naval attack. Um, but I don't think PAG will go for that. We can see they've already gone for two air factories, not even a single uh, naval factory yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they just go a lot of air. They might go a lot of air this game just because yeah. fast moving air on a big map like this, it's just going to be so powerful and PAG in general do quite like air. Yeah, they need that air control anyway. But I mean, if you think about uh, Colt, Colt's strong point seems to be in massing docks really, really quickly from their two different spawns. We can already see lots and lots of bots, lots of bot fabricators, and lots of docks moving all over the place. Meanwhile, in the PAG spawns, you've got vehicles, you've got air, and you've got more vehicles, really sort of neglecting bots there. So, I don't know. PAG are going to be able to expand slow and steady while maintaining their defence with their tanks, while Colt... Um, I still find it very hard to predict Colt's expansion, because they've got tons of fabricators, but half of them seem idle. Mm, mm. A lot of fabricators, and a lot of them not doing anything in the bases right now. Um, really need to be expanding and building up the eco as quickly as possible. We see a couple of storage actually coming up from PAG. Uh, metal storage, actually. And uh, that commander that's in the lake is moving onto the ground. I think he's going to start building his vehicle factories here. He's built his three air factories. Oh, he's actually going for a bot factory. That's a little bit of a surprise. I was going to think that Pag would probably go all vehicles. Because we do see all bots going again for Colt. I definitely think that's a mistake for Colt. I think all vehicles would favour Colt much, much more. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see whether they make the transition at the right time. But a few docks there, trying to get in on uh, some of Pag's expansion. But there's tanks there to defend. I mean, Colt need to be able to adapt to vehicles earlier than they have been. Mm. I think that's been their biggest weakness so far. Is that they insist on using docks over tanks. Mm. It's such an unusual choice. I, as a noob, I use tanks as my crutch because they're so easy and so reliable whereas docks are much harder to play and much more micro intensive so as a noob I consider them to be an awesome useful unit and I'm surprised that Colt aren't using them for that reason just because they're so much easier mm -hmm. 
And the thing is, what is your game plan? If you go all docks, and you win the early game, and you do tons of raiding, and you help control the early game, what about early mid game when you have you can't fight them because they've got tanks and they just absolutely smash you two to one in terms of medal costs? How are you ever going to get into a fight mid game when you've only got docks? Because you can't. They're just too weak. Yeah. You you have to make that transition, and I think that's what declares the early mid game is that transition to tanks. Mm. <clears throat> if if you started docks, of course. If uh, if you're early mid game and you started with tanks, then you're just upping your production. Mm. Maybe going out some utility uh, utility bots or something. Yeah. Um. So interesting. We see a switch up in tactics from Colt, and I like this a lot. They're sending their docks groups out, and they've got a. Uh, Air fighters with them, air fighters protecting them, because they got hammered a lot by bombers in the last game. So having some fighters, specifically next to all your groups of raiding docks, it's going to be very useful. It's going to be useful, yes. But there's only like one or two fighters in each of those clumps. Like uh, this clump over here has what one fighter with it? Yeah, yeah. They definitely need more, for <coughs> your, like groups of five or more. But um, the right idea. I like what they're doing. I like, yeah. I like their thinking. They've been doing a little bit of raiding with their docks, been picking up just a couple of mechs here and there, but ultimately, it's not even a win. Picking up a couple of mechs here and there just means nothing. It really does mean nothing. Because it can be rebuilt so quickly, and they have so much other limitless metal available to them. It's just, it's not a, it's not a win, really. Yeah, they got to do... Uh they got to do a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm surprised that they've given this their home system, given the tactics that they decide and strategies that they decide to employ. I don't necessarily feel that it's compatible with this system, and I'm trying to put my finger on to that reason. Mm. I can't quite... I don't know, maybe it's just tiredness after the last game, but I, just, I can't quite figure out why it doesn't work for them so well. Mm. Uh, we've got some boom bots being switched up. They're actually going to go straight in towards the tanks. Weird choice. Took most of them out. Uh, they do okay. They do okay, actually. They could have done much, much worse. Um, I certainly know when you're using tanks and people send boom bots at you, it is a nightmare because you can't kill them quick enough and that it's just really awkward how fast they move towards you and how quickly they kill you and you can't really do anything about it. Hmm. And it also forces a transition to bots as well from yes. uh, from PAG because uh, to defend defend against them you need uh, you need the yeah. docks. You need docks. There's no question. The docks are fast. They're mobile. They have a really high fire rate, and they they, they perfectly counter the docks. So you you basically need them. It's it's quite difficult to only use tanks <coughs> if your opponent starts mixing up the boom bots in there. Mm. Did see a few docks from PAG raiding the mechs of Cult. Hopefully Cult will be able to keep up their expansion despite losses in some areas. They are floating their eco, so they could be producing more. And a whole load of docks actually coming in at the naval player here. Some bombers coming in at them. They've got their fighters there to protect. Oh wow. Fighters do shoot down the bombers. So there's actually a lot of those docks left to come in for an attack here. A couple of turrets coming up. Boombot's coming in from the left-hand side. Commander here a little bit vulnerable. He's going to need to walk in the water. It looks like he's going to move him forward, north and try and use his uber cannon to destroy these units. Ooh, got to be careful with those boombots. So many boombots coming in from the south as well. If that commander's called out of position, he's done for. I I like these tactics from Colt. They're switching up and putting boombots in and trying to get in. Some but bar. they can't get to that commander now because yeah. they, he's in the water. That's the thing. They need they need air and or a foothold in the water. They need to get some naval or something up on their north spawn there. <clears throat> Like, because you know how strong narwhals are against air now, right? Yep. It's all they need is like two or three of those, and they're good to go with orca production, and then just absolutely destroy that Osiris commander in the water. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. If anything, I would say culture get in the water. I mean, like, this is the perfect location. Not only does it protect them from naval units coming in, it allows them to attack that player perfectly. And he hasn't invested any navels, so he'll be in big trouble. Mhm. Mm Tanks coming in at the north side of Colt's base, need to be careful, sending in bombers to rendezvous and deal with them. Only one anti air in the mix for PAG, so they can't stop those bombers at all. Good defences there from Colt. So I guess this is the one option, right? If you've got docks and you want to get into confrontations with the tanks, 
You use bombers, because that's the only thing you can do. Doc's coming in at the naval player again. They can, of course, go through the water, which is another a lovely little advantage of Doc's on this on this map with loads of uh, loads of water pools around. Yeah, they're still failing to split up their docks when they need to. Kudos to Colt, however. They're trailing by not much metal. 900 to 1,050. So only about 10-15% behind. Not actually that much, especially at this stage. I think it's their production, if we look at the army tab. Both have 500 forces, but... 500 docks versus 500 tanks is a mm. huge win for the tanks, and that's that's the disadvantage right and now. And they're beginning to encroach on the southern base there, laying a bit of yeah. damage to the production, and all the interceptors there just sitting sentry. And, I, and PAG knows that they don't need to put too many spinners into their composition because they haven't seen heavy bombers. So mm. they're just going full ham on the tanks. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, I, th I think what PAG tends to do is generally just invest in a lot of fighters and not any ground anti-air. Yeah. Um, as long as you pay enough attention and have your units in the right place, then you'll be okay. Mm. And of course, fast dynamic response to air threats is always good. We've got T2 from PAG now as well over on the southern spawn there. Getting up lots of factories, slammers coming out. Wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing some sniper bots and or... Um, some blue hawks. Speaking of blue hawks, they can shoot the orbital air in the uh, in the next patch. Indeed, in the PTE, the blue <clears throat> hawks can now shoot the orbital air along with sniper bots. No, not sniper bots. It's uh, tactical it's missile launchers. So you've got catapults, no, no, blue hawks, else. and ca yeah, stingrays. Stingrays. The T2 uh, naval ships, right? Yes. Which is an interesting choice, I think. Meanwhile, we've got fighting going on uh, on all sides now. It looks as though the southern cult spawn is now pretty much surrounded. Yeah, Commander taking a trouble. bit of damage. Big trouble for that southern player. Northern players are just about holding out, even though they're beginning to seize quite a bit of map control right now. The southern players is beginning to be surrounded. That commander in a lot of risk. Oh, the tanks are going to fire on him. This commander's in a lot of risk as he falls down to 45% already. And that is more than enough tanks to kill a commander. I don't think they notice here. Yeah. They noticed one uber cannon or just moving the commander away. Uh, now they know this. They uh, uber cannon, but it's too late. Where was my, where must their attention have been? Where could yeah. they have been looking? They might have been concentrating <clears> on their <throat> fighters there. They're doing a lot of movements with their air units right now. And they're losing a lot of docks to bombers on the northern spawn as well there. Mm. <coughs> they keep losing docks to bombers. I'm really surprised they don't transition to vehicles and spinners earlier. It, yeah. It really surprises me. I just, I definitely think it would suit their playstyle better. I mean, having fast docks on a big planet is always nice, but you don't raid when there's this much metal because there's no point. Um, so they can't be used for raiding. So there's not much they can actually do well. Whereas tanks, mm. they may be slow, but once they get there, they're hard hitting. Yeah, and then a 2-2 factory just going down on the south spawn there, destroyed by the tanks coming in. Lots of factories are going to go down from this as well. Looking in the army tab there, 52 factories to 72, so Colt already behind. Mm. Fabers, 25 to 48. Oh, ho, ho. Ouch. Yeah, that southern base is getting uh, hammered pretty badly now. More groups of units also coming in. Coming in from the north and the south, one commander left there in a bit of trouble already. And uh, and Pag just needs to start concentrating on the northern players now. Mm. They do have a lot of air units. It looks like they're dominating the air right now. Counter-attack coming in from Colt, which is good. Always want to be counter-attacking, even if it looks like you're very far behind. But the thing is, they can't do much lasting damage. It doesn't matter if they destroy 10 mechs. Because PAG will just rebuild 10 mechs 30 seconds later. Yeah, or at the same time elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, be rebuilding while they're being destroyed. Bombers coming in, defending the southern cult base commander, also putting in uber cans to get rid of these tanks that are in there. That's good, he's defended for now, but he's lost some factories to less production, and more units coming in as well. Not going to be good. We do see a switch up to Grenadiers, which is interesting. Grenadiers kind of trash in this patch. They basically lose out against everything. Docks, tanks, pretty much everything. But they are getting a buff in the next patch. They are getting 20% cost reduction, which is nice, and a 10% range increase. 
Um, so I don't think it's quite enough to make them good and useful and usable, but it's a, a step in the right direction, if you ask me. Yeah, it's certainly a start. Um, I, just looking at this game, though, it's... Why grenadiers? Why not vehicles? I don't think I've ever seen cult go vehicles. Maybe it's something we can ask them afterwards. I mean, have, have they got some they form of T2 allergic vehicles. reaction? They've got T2 vehicles. Yeah. They don't, they don't have an aversion to the T2 vehicles. And another iteration of the Great Wall of Cult. Yeah. But, uh, Knocking off the northern side. Slammers now pushing in to the north with those vehicles as the teleporters there. Really good use of the teleporter. It means that you've got all those units now uh, negating the travel time, although you still seem to have a lot of units pathing up. So perhaps that teleporter is from a different location. More units coming in at the northern side cult base. Got some uh, docks here to deal with them as well, though. Should be able to defend against this attack, but there's T2 slammers in there. And T2 slammers rip through docks very quickly because they're just like powered up docks with a high fire rate. Mm. Um, and loads of T2 units also coming in as reinforcements from the south. This is not good news for cult as they're going to lose their northern base. The southern one is a shell. There's kind of no metal left, but there's the super tanky power gens and the super tanky factories left. Um, yeah. Interestingly, again, in the PTE, there's more balance changes that will hopefully be coming to stable soon, which is where the power gens have finally been nerfed. Their HP was 3,000. <laughs> they are literally a wall onto themselves, and they've been nerfed down to 1,000 HP, which sounds a lot more reasonable. Oh, pause. Um, looks like we've got a pause by cope there, so we'll see what happens and uh, we'll let them sort out. Mm. What do you think about that change to the power gens, Marshall? I think it's ridiculous, drastic and radical, but not unwarranted. <laughs> I don't think it's drastic, I don't think it's radical. I say that because it's such a big, a big change. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant when I said drastic and radical, not in so far as the intention behind it. In <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, it looks uh, like cops are, are going to surrender. Cops <laughs> <laughs> surrender. <laughs> <laughs> looks like neither team paused and no one knows why they were pausing. Uh, one cult commander on the outskirts of that base is in trouble. He is so dead. With those slammers yeah. surrounding him, he is gone. He is not going to last. And there he goes. Losing a few units, though. Still taping, keeping them a little bit too close. And the commander on the south spawn now as well, coming under a bit of threat as he's got few tank armies either side. He's got a teleporter there, so he's just going to start running away. And a teleporter going up in the northern spawn. But is that any better to actually uh, get that commander there or leave there? Because there are so many slammers and so many tanks. It just it pains me to see so many docks try and one-up tanks when they just know they can't. Yeah, they just can't. Commander now being chased away. Teleporter actually going up. They're going to fight till their last breath. Another uber cannon here would certainly save him. Ping going off on the orange commander on the south. Yeah. Oh, that commander. He's getting low. He's on ten percent right now. Oh, nine percent. Just to take oh, care of the tanks as wow. he gets away. And the teleporter does go up. But where's he going to teleport to? Well, his Is other, he teleport his, his other commander. commander. Yeah. That's, Interesting. That's where you've got the two commanders there. I don't know, at this point it's just Colt running away again. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They've got bombers, <coughs> um, and I think they're going to use the bombers to finish it off. That, that is the logical choice. The uh, units are coming in to destroy that commander in the northern base. He's not going to be able to stop that, and they're probably going to use the bombers on the other commander. Yeah. Teleporter gets activated. Commander hasn't walked through it yet, but he needs to hurry. He's, he needs to hurry. It's going the other way. The commander's coming to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was unexpected. Are they going to do the old switcheroo? Are They're they holding hands. There we go. They're going to hold hands. <laughs> oh. together. Right. And then the bombing run coming in for the other <laughs> They go down together. <laughs> well, that was short and sweet compared to last hour and a half long game. Oh my god, the air coming in. Oh. <laughs> Overkill. In they have a lot of air, a lot of power there. Oh, wow. Right, shall we talk to uh, Icy from the cult? Indeed, let's bring him in. Okay, bring him up now. Incoming Icy. Hi, Icy Khan. Hey. 
Hi there, how you doing? Uh, okay. I'm doing fine. <laughs> okay. This is the, the, the number one burning question I want to ask you. Sure. Why bots? <laughs> well, look, um... We could try vehicles and then teleporters near their bases to attack them, right? But the thing is... I know to you guys it sounds ridiculous, but to us it's too much multitasking. I mean, when we're playing guys at our level, we can do it, but when we're playing these guys, it's so quick to react to everything. Mm -hmm. That so we thought that we'll do something else. We'll just make tons of bots and harass all their metal, so that while they're taking care of you know all those bots, because we'll have like mo more than they do, and we have more than they do. We just can't micro them quick enough. The problem to is, like bots lose heavily in a fight against no, no, tanks. No, but they would never fight anything. They would only hit mechs, and then they would run away, and then hit more mechs all around their bases. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I understand and what you're saying, but to me, to me, I mean, from my perspective. That is really micro-intensive, and it is a huge amount of effort and work, and way But we have two difficult. players who are doing only this. So I two see. players are building the bases, and okay. two players are only microing the doxies around the uh, enemy bases. Okay, okay, I see. Ooh, that makes sense. Um, personally, as some advice, I would say just try going with tanks, and you might be surprised. We have done it before, we're gonna do it again in probably the next game, but we wanted to try this once. We tried it the first time, and mm. the, 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 um, the plan was that when they started moving towards our base with the, with the doxy, we switched to boombots, right? But mm -hmm. the first game, we were so stressed, we didn't even do it. Like, it was in the plan before, it's in my forum, we posted it. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't do it. And so we said, okay, let's do it one more time, and this time we used it, so we used the boombots. Mm -hmm. If if you actually compare the two fights, in the second fight we did like 10% better than the, than the other one. Oh no, you did much better this game. I really so like what I'm saying is if we when, could when do it 20 times in a row, mm -hmm. that's the thing, we don't have people to play against. Like, if we could do it 20 times in a row, we'd get better at it. But then we go back to the MP lobby and everybody sucks in there. Like, we need to yeah. do 4v6. So yeah. I know we what have you're to saying. do our, our training on Clan Wars. Well, what can I say, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Um, but I really liked you switching up to this boombox. When you did that, I was like, hey, this is a new tactic coming out, and uh, it's a really great idea. I mean, you came close to uh, putting that commander in quite a little bit of danger as you move those boombots up next to the uh, the water sports. Yeah, I was glad to see that. I, I hope we would take him out, but... Yeah. It was still good. It was still... You still clearly, you know, you're making moves, and you're thinking about what you're doing. Uh, oh, no, we're good. not stupid, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just slow. We're not stupid. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you should try practicing because public games, you know, the, the, the skill level's so low you can't even practice in them. So maybe like contact Promethean or Burning and try and get some like practice scrims. They, they've offered, but you know how I see it. I, if I was in their position, I would not want to play against me because it would be boring. Mm -hmm. So I don't go on their team speak because uh, you know I don't. I don't think it's going to be fun for them. It's like we play one game and then we want to play another game to try against something, but uh, you know. I'm just, I I'm just holding out for, for, for more clans are near our level, and then mm. it will be more fun for us, more fun to watch for you guys, you know? Yeah, sure, I think that would help. I think you'd be surprised at how helpful these guys are, and how much they just, uh, they just want to play some games, and they just, they, they want to help you guys, and help you get better, and help practice some games with you. I think you'd be surprised, you should give them a chance. But for, for me, I basically, I don't want to help anybody, I just want to have fun, so... <laughs> 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 so I, I, I want to be playing against people who are ideally like 10% better than me, but these guys yeah. are like 200%, so... Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, agreed. Okay, good stuff. Um, thanks for chatting to us. Uh, do sure. You have, do you have one more game left today? Actually, yes. we have two more. One on Burning System and one on Pags. Yeah. So you're going to be playing on Burning's Home System next, and then you'll be playing on Pags a little bit later. So I'll let you guys get into the lobby for that, and uh, and we will see you in game. Sure. Later.